Take it slow, but it's not typical. He already knows that my love is fire. His heart was a stone, but then his hands wrong. I turned him to gold and it took him higher. Well, I'll be a daydream. Hey, 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 I was here. So, on my previous vlog, I asked you to send me some questions on Twitter using the hashtag AskIS. And so the most frequently asked question is, why do plants wilt? Hmm. Well, that's so easy. So I met up with one of the person who asked me that question, and here she is. Ta-da! Hello, I'm Alan, and my question is, why do plants wilt? My gosh, that's so easy, girl. So without further ado, let's get it on. So, you see, this is a wilted plant. Can you point it for me, please? Yeah, so plant cells are generally hypertonic compared to their fluid environment. As a result, there is a tendency for water to enter the cell, causing it to develop an internal pressure that pushes against its surrounding wall. Turgor pressure provides support for non-woody plants and for the non-woody parts of trees, such as the leaves. If a plant cell is placed into hypertonic medium, its volume shrinks as the plasma membrane pulls away from the surrounding cell wall, a process called plasmolysis. The loss of water due to plasmolysis causes plants to lose their support and wilt. This topic is related to the concept of plasma membranes. Membranes are lipid protein assemblies in which the components are held together in a thin sheet by non-covalent bonds. As noted above, the core of the membrane consists of a sheet of lipids arranged in bimolecular layer. Because the contents of a cell are completely surrounded by its plasma membrane, all communication between the cell and the extracellular medium must be mediated by this structure. In a sense, the plasma membrane has a dual function. On one hand, it must retain the dissolved materials of the cell so that they do not simply leak out into the environment while on the other hand, it must allow the necessary exchange of materials into and out of the cell. There are basically two means for the movement of substances through a membrane, passively by diffusion or actively by an energy-coupled transport process. Both types of movements lead to the net flux of a particular ion or compound. Several different processes are known by which substances move across membranes. Simple diffusion through the lipid bilayer, Simple diffusion through an aqueous protein line channel, diffusion that is facilitated by a protein transporter, and active transport, which requires an energy-driven protein pump capable of moving substances against a concentration gradient. Diffusion is a spontaneous process in which a substance moves from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration, eventually eliminating the concentration difference between the two regions. Water molecules move much more rapidly through a cell membrane than do dissolved ions or small polar organic solutes, which are essentially non-penetrating. Because of this difference in the penetrability of water versus solutes, membranes are said to be semi-permeable. Water moves readily through a semi-permeable membrane from a region of slow solute concentration to a region of high solute concentration. This process is called osmosis, which is related to the concept of a wilting plant. Other types of movements of substances through the membranes are facilitated diffusion and active transport. Substances always diffuse across the membrane from a region of higher concentration on one side to a region of lower concentration on the other side, but they do not always diffuse through the lipid bilayer or through a channel. In many cases, the diffusing substance first binds selectively to a membrane-spanning protein called a facilitative transporter that facilitates the diffusion process. The binding of the solute to the facilitative transporter on one side of the membrane is thought to trigger a conformational change in the protein, exposing the solute to the other surface of the membrane from where it can diffuse down its concentration gradient. Because they operate passively, that is, without being coupled to an energy-releasing system, facilitated transporters can mediate the movement of solutes equally well in both directions. The direction of net flux depends on the relative concentration of the substance on the two sides of the membrane. 
like facilitated diffusion, active transport depends on integral membrane proteins that selectively bind a particular solute and move it across the membrane in a process driven by changes in the protein's conformation. Unlike facilitated diffusion, However, movement of a solute against a gradient requires the coupled input of energy. Consequently, the endergonic movement of ions or other solutes across the membrane against a concentration gradient is coupled to an exergonic process, such as the hydrolysis of ATP, the absorbance of light, the transport of electrons, or the flow of other substances down their gradients. Proteins that carry out active transport are often referred to as pumps. Those are the other processes by which substances move across membranes. I think you overdid yourself there. I only asked you why the plants built. But that's okay. We're pretty smart. I know, right? You're welcome. So guys, thank you so much for listening in my quite educational vlog. I hope you like it. If you like it, please click the like button. Follow me on my social media accounts listed below and may the plants in your gardens grow and never wilt. Bye! Bye